conversation with Herman Kojo Chineri Hesse, who is commonly referred to as the Bill Gates of Africa. In 1991, he co-founded Softribe, which is one of the leading IT and software houses in Africa. Since then, he's gone on to co-found and found several software companies. Today, we're going to have several conversations with him. But primarily, we're going to find out about his journey and some of the biggest challenges he faced in getting to where he is today. So thank you once again, and welcome to the conversation. Yes, so thank you once again for being with us today. Thank you. Your story is very inspiring. So um, I think it was the first story that uh, BBC featured on the African Dream. Is I think right? so, yes. Yeah, so please, can you tell us a bit more about your work with Softribe, the software company that you, you founded, you co-founded, and what it is you've done, um, you know, what exactly were the challenges you had in setting it up, lessons learned and experiences you've had through the whole process? A big topic. <laughs> I know, I can imagine. Okay. Um, um. Um, Softdrive started from my bedroom. Yeah. Um, I studied manufacturing. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, and my parents were not. My parents were not uh, bureaucrats, and I wanted to work in Africa. And so, um, straight after university, I moved back home, and uh, with all my idealism <laughs> and uh, invinci invincibility. Yeah. And said I was going to set up a factory and practice my manufacturing. And, uh, uh, obviously, I didn't realize it then, but uh, I realized that look, I have no money. Mm -hmm. I never worked, I didn't have a credit card. And uh, I was going to be flat broke. And then I realized <laughs> that I had a computer. Yes. And I thought to myself, wait a second, I don't have money to set up the manufacturing industry. Yeah. You can't get loans in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the computer I have can make software. That's a factory. That was my bingo moment. Wow. Yeah, How much moment. capital did you have at the time? Nothing. I think I went home with two thousand pounds. <laughs> after the Christmas holiday, it was finished. <laughs> it was done. <laughs> so so you, had to, you needed to set up a I business, to ESA. <laughs> okay. So I remember when I was in London, and I worked in London for a year and a half, okay. just to say I had some work experience at yeah. the University in America. I did some freelancing mm -hmm. and I wrote, because I, was, I had a hobby of writing programs. Absolutely. I wrote some programs for some travel agents here. Mm -hmm. There's something on the side to earn my ticket to go back. Yeah. And I took that program and I went around hopping around. Excuse me, um, travel agency, do you have a computer? Can I, can I do this for you? And so one of them actually said, okay, yeah, show me what you can do. And I showed it to him. And he was excited and he gave me a contract. So that was soft trip. And that was the beginning. Wow. So we started doing travel software and uh, we went from agency to agency. Sometimes you walk in, they tell you to go to hell. Other times they say sit down, they'll take it and negotiate. So we started learning business because, you know, I, my background was not business. My parents didn't do business. So basically we started, we went on and on and then my friend had a poultry farm. We yeah. came, we had raised some money. He said, mm -hmm. I need some popularization. We did that and then we started doing the point of sale systems. Next thing we knew, we're controlling maybe 60-70% of all IT in Ghana and we're the biggest thing. Turnover is doubling every year. I went to recruit and employ and recruit and employ and we moved from my bedroom to the back of the house. And then from there we got our own offices and that kind of thing. And we went on and on until the internet came and the mobile phones came. Those two events changed the nature of the landscape. So can I, can I, so just how exactly has it changed the landscape? I'm sure you're going to answer that, but just wanted to make sure that. Okay, that's I'm, I'm going to break it down in detail. Thank you. Detail. Thank you. Okay, two things happened. Uh, software used to dominate the multinationals. So what exactly, so what kind of software did you build? Just business okay, Payroll, okay. accounting, okay. Um, manufacturing, process, uh, monitoring and management, okay. uh, HR, that kind of thing. Okay. ERPs. Okay. So what happened was that with the advent of the internet, the multinationals could, could now fall back on head office because systems could be serviced online. Mm -hmm. So whereas we were a niche provider locally mm -hmm. and we're doing well at that, we lost those contracts because head office said, ah, thank we God. We can just do it ourselves yeah. now and use the systems we already have. And use the consultants in France we already have. And that's what they did. 
So they started switching a lot of the systems off and turning on. So in that sense, it was a negative. Okay. But then, the positive side of it is that it, it made our operations for across across the continent. Communication brings efficiency. You don't have yeah. to go away for your mechanic and pray he comes anytime, sometime in the future. You can tell when he's there, make an appointment, that kind of thing. It improves the economy generally. You can now move software around by email, mm -hmm. attachments, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. That helped. But uh, what it allowed us to do is to rethink our whole model. And in rethinking our whole model, we came up with what we thought were a whole sexier range of products. Um, first thing we, we, we realized was that our people are poor, not because they're stupid, but because they can't trade with the world. Now with SMS, with the internet, they can. My view was that I'm a Pan-Africanist. My parents were both in development. My mother was under Secretary General in the UN. So we are development-oriented mm -hmm. people. So the first thing I thought was, are all those people that my mother used to talk about, oh, we need to get funding for the basket weavers of this place, and we're helping these people to that. Ah, if I could set up an online shop, better an online mall, where they can all present their stuff for sale, and they could trade like that, then everybody would be happy. I'll make a percentage on it. They will suddenly start selling stuff into China and Germany and so on and so on and so on and into Nigeria and into that. And we can do this across Africa. Oh my God, this is going to be big. So we created a new company called Black Star Line. I spoke about it at TED mm -hmm. in 2007 and we raised money to start it. So we run two companies today. Yeah. We run Softrack, we run Black Star Line. Black Star Line owns shopafrica53.com. Oh. That is the website okay. that we're setting up to do this trade. So um, we started running uh, shop, preparing Shop Africa. Mm -hmm. it, it's been, we've been doing it for five years. Yes. It's a long term venture. Um, you can, as you can imagine, it requires us setting up a payment platform because we looked around Africa and the world. There was no payment platform that would work for Africa. So we had to invent one. We invented it. It's called the Sundiata mm -hmm. platform. To think through and invent it. And when we finished, we had to sell it to the banks because I went and they interviewed me on the radio when we were about to start Shop Africa five years ago in my talkative way. And I explained how it would work and how everybody could make money. And the guy interviewing me said, My God, it means I could stop doing this job, <laughs> go behind my house, and, and my wife and I would make beads. We sell them for $10 a pop. And if every day we could sell a hundred online, uh, because we can find a hundred people around the world who want some nice, colorful African beads yeah. at ten dollars a pop every day, that's more than I'm earning here. Mm -hmm. And she, he asked me, "How do you pay?" And when I described the payment system, I was like, oh "My God, I don't know if I'm going to stay in this job." And everybody laughed. <laughs> and I had the call in and everything. The next day, the regulator in Ghana came to my office and arrested me. Oh. He basically said what I had described was a violation of our Financial Services Act. Why? Because I was placing financial instruments on the streets. And that I would need a banking license to do that. To talk about it. So we now have to stop and deal with the banks. Now, when we spoke to the banks initially, they were not into e-commerce. They didn't understand e-commerce. So we had to go back to the drawing board. We knew what we wanted out of them. We had to find out what they needed. Mm -hmm. We discovered that 80% of Africans are unbanked. Because mm -hmm. if you put a bank branch in the village, mm -hmm. it does not, it won't make the money back. The village has $20,000 turnover a year. The bank costs $600,000 to put that physically. But if you could do it on the phone, mm -hmm. then suddenly they could have all these people banked profitably. <laughs> so what we did was we went and designed a branchless banking, so the other branchless banking platform, and sold that to the banks. And as part of that infrastructure, what we needed for the e-commerce was built in. So suddenly, we had a bank underwritten e-commerce payment system. And that's what we did. The banks are happy, but they're just looking at it as a mechanism to get all the villages onto the account, to get accounts with their banks. Yeah, but as a byproduct, it also allows us to do our thing. So we're happy. And while doing this, the delay in getting the banking partners and sorting out the regulation cost us so much time 
that we actually run out of money. Oh, wow. From Black Star Line. In doing a Shop Africa thing, we run out of money. <coughs> so I opted that. What if we want to raise more money? We, we, we would need, rather, to come up with, we've done all this research, mm -hmm. and we just have a blockage for a while. Mm -hmm. We're waiting for it to clear. We use the same research to come up with new products. So those new products will feed us money daily until we get all the permissions and we go live. And that's exactly what we did. So we came up with a few interesting products. Mm -hmm. Our best-selling product right now, as I was mentioning earlier, is, is Hey Jula. Hey Jula is an anti arm robbery product. Oh, and, and what's you know, it called? Hey Jula, which means Ole Ole, like Thief Thief. Oh. <laughs> right? Okay. H-E-I-J-U-L-O-R. Okay. H-E-I, you should Google it sometime. Okay. Now, here's how it works. Ten dollars a month. Mm -hmm. You buy a starter pack mm -hmm. from the gas station, rip it open, pull it out, it's a sticker, just put the sticker on your gate, read the instructions, send a text to our call center, a certain number. Mm -hmm. Our call center calls, hello madam, thank you, congratulations for buying, so on, so what's your name? They ask you a bunch of questions, at the end of which, a motorcycle comes to your house and GPS is your gate, because mm -hmm. it's uses a sticker there, mm -hmm. GPS your gate. So three months later, you're chilling out in your house, it's, it's, it's midnight, there's some noises outside, strange noises. There are five phones in your house that just need to call a number. It rings once. Our server picks up the number. It will immediately fire messages to ten of your neighbors and friends, i.e. your ex-boyfriend at national security. You know your house is being robbed. Your cousin at the presidency will know. Your neighbors will know. Your policeman friend down the road, he will know. And Madame's house is under attack. So how does he get the numbers? During the initial interview, oh, okay. when they called you, so okay, so you, you, asked you all find the out people that you would like to all know the in the yeah, event, yeah. and I left them ahead of time that in the event this comes, it's real. Wow. Yeah. So that's the first thing it does. Second thing it does is we cut a deal, so it will, it will ring them and text them too. So in the middle of the night they'll wake up. And then the second thing we do is we have a deal with the private security companies, mm -hmm. so they get alerted immediately. They have the, they have they have a plug into our system, so there's a GPS immediately. The, the, the cars have phones we give them, mm -hmm. which go direct on Google Maps to your house. We can go see the sticker. So if they have two houses identical. We actually get the houses serial numbers. It's 05, 06. Which one is being robbed? It's 06, that one. All that we did. The private security company coming on contract. Not just anyone. We have a contract with them. We have a split in the money. The third thing we do is we have a deal with the police also. We provided the police with a big James Bond screen where when there's a crime, it starts popping. Then the nearest vehicle, police vehicle, but they also have our phones running our software. One pops in red, one pops green, They're popping. And they say the directing, turn left, turn right, turn right, it's right in front of you, right there. There's police. We have a deal with the radio stations, they also share in the revenue. And uh, today the president read the budget. Sorry, sorry, breaking news. House number 55, opposite the cathedral on the Wallowa Road, 55. The, the one with the blue gates. Everybody go and help them. There's something happening in that house right now. Anybody in the area, go and help So basically, a thief, once you see that sticker, you go away. Yes. Go somewhere else where, yeah, it doesn't happen. where it's not stressful. Yeah, it hardly ever happens. I think we've had one or two. But otherwise, you know, they just avoid it. That's a very uh -huh. interesting setup for ten, $10 a month. And yeah, we haven't finished. If, in spite of all this, yes. they do come through all the people and the police and the, and the onlookers and everything and they enter your house. When they come, you tell them, good morning, sirs. What do you want? My phone? You can have it. By the way, I have another one in the back and, a, and an old laptop. You want that too? Take the TV too. Take everything you want because we cut a deal with our insurance friends. To cover? They cover up to $8,000. Wow. All this for $10 a month. These are game changers in the industry. Thank you very much. It's been a very interesting conversation. Thank you once again.